my birthday, it's my birthday. Hello everyone, it's the weekend day girl and yes, I'm wearing my capuche as a chapeau. Because honestly, it's windy, snowy, minus 13 degrees Celsius, I think. And it's my birthday, so I'm gonna celebrate it with you guys today here in Vladimir. Let's get started. no idea why but local Kremlin is not particularly popular with tourists why is it so I don't know but the fact is that the Kremlin around Suzdal is much more popular and better known than the one here in Vladimir perhaps it has to do with the fact that mostly it's just a barrier a wall just a wall around the local monastery and churches which actually are two of the UNESCO objects here in this city but I like it because the view is quite good it is actually pretty close to the city centre it's one of the beginnings or endings of it because modern city centre is just located um, on Saborna Square and surrounding uh, streets yes and uh, you can go around and around and around just like I do and the panorama queue is nothing to scoff at although right now it's not particularly pretty and yes look at the wall this city can be called the white city and it was half joke half true because uh, what actually got uh, Vladimir its UNESCO status is the fact that here are the um, last uh, remaining examples of the white stone Russian medieval architecture and it's pretty beautiful and we're gonna see it all just I should find the end in this circle yeah and we're gonna proceed Vladimir was founded at the beginning of the 12th century by uh, Vladimir Monomach. Well, some people say that it was actually somewhere in the middle of the 10th century or perhaps it was due to Vladimir the Red Sun but it has no basis so just rumors. Rumor has it. And this city was founded, it was flourishing particularly due to the uh, financial aid and support of Prince Andrew Bogolubsky. The city was flourishing and thriving. Later the Tartars came. Yeah, terrible, terrible Tartar people and they just had to destroy it all. They didn't destroy it actually. Just Vladimir began to lose its prominence and as you remember then there were like Tver and Moscow and Moscow began rising in power and gaining more and more supporters and lands and prominence ah oh, churches 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 yes the yellow traditional one unfortunately we are gonna see actually lots of churches here and monuments and buildings lots of neoclassical art nouveau and even stalin empire style buildings oh, it sounds cool like you know stalin empire style like Darth Vader. Dun, 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 dun. yeah <laughs> not a good joke but Association is a weird thing. So here is the church turned into observatory. I was writing about it on my Instagram. And there is uh, the Kremlin wall following which you can find the male monastery. Uh, and somewhere there on the territory, Alexander Nevsky is buried. Uh, he's actually one of the most prominent figures in Russian history, but I'll tell you about him later when we go to Novgorod. And right now we are going further into the city. Vladimir is a very lovely city with many people walking around and lots of tourists since uh, it is a part of the 
golden rain route so of course there are lots of people here and actually one of the most visited cities in the European part of Russia and we are going to one of the most important monuments of this city which actually existed even before the golden yoke it's actually quite easy to get anywhere here you go to the Saborne Square past the Golden Gate and then just move forward to the city center or the other way around the way I'm going from the Kremlin and then all the way along the street right through the city center to the Golden Gate and it's here my problems with equipment begin Yay! If you go into San Francisco... Unfortunately, unfortunately, we are not in San Francisco. We are in Vladimir, continuing our excursion around the city. And these are the Golden Gates. Uh, there used to be seven of them, actually, but they were partially destroyed, those entrances to the city. So, yeah, that's what remains since the pre-Mongol Tartar times. Uh, and it was due to the golden horde coming to the city at the 1230s yeah and seizing the place at the command of the then leader battle club that um, the city began to lose its prominence it is worth mentioning actually quite an interesting fact that Vladimir actually remained capital of Rus, but since the time it was seized, it had no ruling dynasty, unlike in Moscow, Princeton, or Tver, or I don't know, Rizan, or any other Princeton actually, and uh, that was connected to the fact that uh, Rus was under the yoke, and so to rule and sit in the main city of the country, one had to go to the port and have some shady dealings, you know. The leadership was always changing here yeah, and of course it did not run main source to the end. So the factual government began relocating to Moscow. And Moscow began to rise to its prominence until the 16th century finally uh, became the very center of the country and later the Rus firstly and then the Russia. Fun effects about the monument behind me is that actually it is not called golden just because you know some saying was about it no there actually used to be uh, folds covered with gold and when Tartars were leaving the city they of course took it all with them mm. the funny fact is that uh, the falls were not completely made of gold, but they most simply covered with, with it. So, of course, they just took the gold and threw the falls away somewhere in the Klazan River. And during the Soviet time, there were actually some archaeological expeditions. <laughs> but actually, there was a funny story <laughs> connected to these falls because uh, Japanese scientists, uh, they told the Soviet government that they could do all this stuff at their own expense, which might be understandable because it's quite an object of history and architecture and art, but they said that in exchange they would take whatever they find at the Dried River with themselves to Japan. And of course Soviet government was like, I don't think it is Oh, the 
Where else to go in Vladimir? Hmm, let's see. In Vladimir there are many funny museums like um, Museum of uh, Spoons. <laughs> yeah. The, 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 yeah, here it is, the commercial. It's actually right behind me somewhere there. But when I go and go inside, there are actually many interesting museums here. And around the city in uh, neighbor, neighboring towns like Suzdal and Guzhrustalny, I've already mentioned the Kremlin in Suzdal. And in Guzhrustalny, they produce crystal ware. And in Vladimir here, there is actually a whole museum dedicated to crystal ware. And it's amazing, absolutely brilliant because if you love dishes and glasses and everything so beautiful and sparkling then definitely it's for you and lots of souvenir shops definitely and commercials a folklore house churches and even a blacksmith shop just even going around walking watching it's already fun but if you can see that the fact that there are so many really interesting places to visit here it makes it even better and the fact that it's all wonderful colorful full of vividness liveliness and history makes it all the more fun for me, at least. Actually, if you want to make some good photos, you should go to the street parallel to the main one. It's called Georgievskaya Street, and there are absolutely beautiful churches and colorful buildings and lots of statues and descriptions, and it's just wow! And there are many tourists there, which is a bonus. Actually, there is another story connected to other Asian neighbors, partners, friends. Uh, I'm speaking about China, of course, and uh, there is a local legend saying that actually the uh, route M7, which goes around um, Vladimir and through it, it was actually uh, intended to be built from Moscow to Beijing because at the time it was built, Russia was a communist country and it was, uh, at least according to the legend, it was thought to be a sort of promotion of friendship and relations between two countries. But then our uh, um, relationship worsened a bit, yeah, and the project was abandoned. Whether it is true or not, you shall decide for yourself. But uh, since then, locals call it a Beijing road, or in Russian, Pekinka. Pekin is Beijing in Russian. Just look at this beauty. Okay, and now weird stories about Russians. Ready? Go. Remember how I was, I was telling you about a uh, funny museums of uh, Vladimir. Well, actually one of them is right behind me and it's called the uh, Museum of Baba Yaga. For those of you <laughs> who are not in the know, Baba Yaga is a um, woman, personage, yeah, um, a figure <laughs> from uh, Slavic folklore. Basically it is an old ugly looking woman who wields a mortar, flies a pestle and lives in the forest in a hut on chicken legs. You got it all together? Yes. <laughs> That's our folklore. Ah. And then people try to understand mysterious Russian soul. And finally, finally we made it to the UNESCO building number one right behind it number two and then uh, the poorly shot number three because my phone didn't want to cooperate again 
You can read all about it uh, on the internet. I just want to tell you that it's truly beautiful and there is an art gallery nearby which is truly good and you should definitely visit it. All in all, that's what Vladimir is like, full of snow, beautiful buildings, colorful pictures, various architectural styles and uh, funny and not so funny stories about his history. And I'll see you next time somewhere else. See ya, bye bye.